juicy, tender chunks of chicken on top of rice that is so full of flavor, you will not even believe. And then the spicy sauce, ah, oh, this is like the ultimate chicken rice. Okay guys, so this is like one of my all time, most favorite Thai street foods. It's Khao Man Gai. Now, obviously the traditions of this dish come from that very famous Chinese version, the Hainan chicken rice. But in Thailand we do things a little bit differently, but there's still the same four components. We've got the chicken, we've got to get that perfect. We've got the rice, uh, we've got the soup, and we've got the sauce. Now the sauce is a little bit spicy here in Thailand. Anyway, let's get on to the cooking part. So I'm gonna start off with some ginger. So we're going to start off making the broth and the chicken first. So I just need some slices here. And then I'm starting off with some chicken stock here. I just think that it adds a bit more extra flavor when you're poaching the chicken in chicken stock rather than just water. So I'm going to put my ginger into there and I want some spring onions as well. And just to make sure we get all of the beautiful spring onion aroma and flavor, I'm going to just give it a quick bruising. Okay, that goes in as well. And now the chicken. So before we do anything with our chicken, what I wanna do is just cut off any extra bits of fat and skin because I'm gonna render that chicken fat down and that is gonna give us so much flavor in our rice. Unbelievable. So don't skip this step. Okay, just take a little bit off the back here. And now anywhere you can see excess skin or fat, just trim that off. Okay, let's turn this guy around. And there's usually quite a bit in the neck area here. So I've ended up with around a quarter of a cup full of bits and pieces here. If your chicken was particularly lean, then perhaps start off with some skin on chicken thigh, take the skin and the fat from that. Um, you don't need too much. Anyway, I'm gonna get my chicken now and I want a good, decent amount of salt on here. Just rub that in. Okay, now the chicken goes into the hot stock. And now, depending on the size of your pot, you might need to add a bit more water here. I need to add a little bit more. I just want enough liquid to come up just almost to the top of that breast. Okay, so just bring that up to a gentle simmer and I'm gonna put a lid on, not completely covering, just a little bit of jar and just let that chicken cook for about an hour or until it's cooked all the way through. Now let's get started on the rice part. So all those little bits and pieces that we cut off the chicken, I'm gonna get that into a saucepan. Just sprinkle with a little bit of salt and then just over a medium kind of heat, just wait for that chicken fat to melt and render and for the chicken skin to turn a lovely golden color. Okay, so this is looking good. You can see we've got a couple of tablespoons there of rendered chicken fat. So I'm gonna pull some of these pieces out. And don't worry, these little crispy bits are not gonna go to waste. They will be eaten by me. <laughs> okay, I don't mind leaving a few bits and pieces in here. Just want to take most of them out. And the next bit of like flavor base that we want for our rice is garlic. So I've got some finely chopped garlic here goes in. Now don't have your heat too high here. I don't want to burn the garlic. I do want it to infuse the chicken fat with its lovely flavor uh, and I do want it to turn a, like a lovely golden brown. So while that's happening I'm just gonna have a quick check on my stock and what you'll need to do here from time to time as that chicken is cooking is just scoop off some of this scummy stuff at the top. That way you'll get a really nice beautiful clear broth at the end. Okay let me check on my garlic. Now that is looking really good. We've just got a little slight touch of golden brown there. So I'm gonna add in my rice. Now I'm using Thai jasmine rice, but any long grain rice will do. Give that a mix. I really want all of those rice grains coated in that beautiful chickeny, garlicky oil. Okay, now at this point, I wanna add in some of the stock that the chicken has been simmering in. And I've got about two cups of rice here. And generally I use about two and a half cups of liquid for two cups of rice. Okay, now give this rice a stir and really use your spoon to scrape up the bottom of the pan because I want to make sure that all of that lovely chickeny stuff that was stuck to the bottom comes up and infuses my rice with flavor. Okay, now to make sure we have the most beautiful, tender and not gluggy rice, this is what we need to do. Just bring this up to a simmer. I'm gonna put the lid on and I'm gonna leave it slightly ajar because I want some of that liquid to evaporate out of the pot. And that needs about 10 minutes and then we'll come back and see how we're going. 
Okay, let's come back to our chicken. And because we stole some of that chicken stock for the rice, I'm gonna top it up with a little bit more water. Just leave that guy simmering away. Okay, so we've got our chicken going, we've got our broth or our soup going, and we have our rice going. Last thing we need to do is the sauce. And here is where the Thai version differs from the Chinese version. So this is a very typical Thai style of sauce, I would say. It's spicy, a little tangy, a little salty. So I'm gonna start off with some garlic. Pop that guy open peel that off and now the root part of the coriander so that's simply this part down the bottom here I know some of you have written to me and said well your supermarket only sells the stem and not the root that's okay use some of the stem instead of the root part and then some ginger as well just peel that with a spoon and a little pinch of salt to help break down some of those fibers. And now you wanna pound this to a very smooth, fine paste. Okay, so this is what you're looking for. Okay, so the next ingredient is really what gives this sauce its very special Thai character. Um, it's always used in this sauce and it's called Dao Jio. Uh, it's basically soybean paste. So you can see here, you can see the little bits of the soybean in there. And you can find this in a lot of Asian grocers or Thai supermarkets. It looks like this, this is just, you know, a standard brand. Um, but what you're looking for is where it says soybean paste. There's a Chinese version as well, you could use that, but do try Try and seek it out it really does give a really beautiful salty umami flavor so that goes in here and then I want some soy sauce okay and then this one here is a sweet dark soy sauce so it's a little thicker than standard dark soy sauce and in Indonesia you would call this one ketchup manis so uh, there you go look out for that one at your Asian grocer too and then I want some vinegar as well and a little bit of sugar okay let's give that a mix and a taste Mm, I love that. It's got that garlicky coriander hit mm, and then like tangy and salty. Perfect. Now what it does need is the chili spice. I need some heat here. So I'm using these bird's eye chilies. These guys are quite fiery. Okay, and there you go. Now each stall in Bangkok that sells Kalman Guy will always have their own version of this. And I love trying them all because to me, it's like the hallmark of a really good Kalman Guy joint if it has a really good sauce. Oh, and I almost forgot, I want a little bit of fresh coriander in there as well. Okay, so this chicken has totally been making my stomach growl for like an hour now. It smells beautiful. Now, I just wanna have one last go at taking off any of that stuff on the top. And I wanna get my chicken out onto a chopping board. And now just pick out all of those aromatics in there. I don't bother straining this one. I don't mind if it's a, a little rustic, um, but up to you if you would like to strain it, you can. Now you'll wanna check this for seasoning because of course we had a couple of top ups with the water. So it's gonna be up to your own kind of personal taste how much salt you wanna add here. Mm, it's so chickeny and comforting. Oh, I love it. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of salt here. Mm, perfect. And just that little extra bit of salt really makes the ginger and the spring onion flavors really sing in there. Mm, beautiful. Now we want to check on our rice here and I can see that the liquid's been absorbed and the rice grains here look super tender and not very gluggy. But the secret for whenever I'm cooking jasmine rice is I put the lid back on and then I turn the heat off but I leave the pan on the warm sort of stove top. And that allows the steam to really permeate evenly throughout that rice right down to the bottom of the pot and then everything is perfectly cooked. So you wanna leave that for a good five to 10 minutes. Okay guys, so now let's break down the chicken. There's a little bit of skill here, but I'm gonna walk you through it. It's all gonna be good. Okay, start off with the legs. Okay, now be careful here. The chicken is hot. If you don't have asbestos hands like me, maybe just let it cool down a little bit. I'm just gonna go straight on in there. Okay, so you just wanna slice through that skin in between the leg and the breast. Flatten that out a little bit. Just kind of bend those legs down a bit. And that way we can kind of see where the joint is here. And I wanna cut through that so it's a nice clean cut. Now there's a little part in here called the chicken oyster underneath. I just wanna make sure my knife is catching that because that's a really tasty part. Okay, uh, and now the wings. And the same thing here, just kind of pull the wing out and then cut through the joint. 
Okay, now to make everything easier when we're dealing with the chicken breast part, I wanna take the wishbone out first. So I'm gonna get my knife and just slice through in here and on the other side as well. And then just use your fingers to kind of feel where the bone is and pull it out. Okay, so there's your wishbone. And when I was little, my mom used to always save these and my dad and I would have the little like pinky competition, you know, where you pull the wishbone and the person has the biggest piece gets to make a wish. Anyway, a little bit of trivia you probably didn't need to know about. Uh, now, the rest of the chicken breast. So you wanna slice directly through the middle. And the whole idea here is that we just want really beautiful large pieces of that breast without sort of mucking it up and tearing it up too much. So I just kind of run my knife against the bone, pulling the meat away as I do. Now, so that we can get some really thin slices of chicken and also to kind of break down and tenderize the chicken breast, I'm gonna just give it a light pounding here with my pestle. And now I can thinly slice that. Okay, now we're ready to get everything out onto our plate. Let's have a look at our rice. Now, the other trick here is to always use a fork to fluff up the rice so that you're not breaking up the grains too much, which you can do if you just use a spoon. Now I just want some rice and then my chicken and then some of our beautifully spicy tangy sauce. A little bit of cucumber as well. And then don't forget about that hot chickeny soup. So there you go guys, a street food classic you can totally make at home. And of course, I'm gonna test it out here, make sure you guys are up for a good recipe. Mm. That sauce and that chicken is so soft and tender. Mm. Yum, this dish makes me so happy. If you've got any comments or questions, pop them below. And if you enjoyed the video, why not hit that subscribe button plus the little bell one and that way you'll get notified every time I release a new video. Thanks guys. Food.